Well, number one, I mean, I would like to see, since Stephen Harper, he's actually not an economist. He has a degree in economics, but he's never actually worked as an economist. But it would be, you think it'd be pretty basic that there'd be an economic study that this was in our interest, but there isn't one. So what can, the per what can we all do? I mean, it's just your question. Uh, you know, backing up, first of all, I think it's a, it was a very encouraging thing because I, 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 you know, I won't, you know, my federal politics are well known. I'm leader of the Green Party. Provincially, you won't be surprised to find that I'm not a big fan of the provincial Liberal Party. But a hats off to Premier and the Governor of BC for doing a very thorough job reviewing the evidence that Enbridge submitted to the Joint Review Panel. And it was after the election was over, so there was no political motivation behind what they did. It, was, it, was, it just was the, the timing selected by the National Energy Board. I guess they could have announced it earlier. But the BC government went to the National Energy Board Joint Review hearings and said, Enbridge hasn't proven its case. We, can't, we oppose this project because Enbridge hasn't shown us that they have any idea, as we were just saying, yeah. what to do if there's a spill, how to clean it up, how to handle it. So uh, one thing that's worth doing, of course, is to continue to, to send messages of support to the Premier and the, and the ruling Liberals in BC to say, we really appreciate, the, the, and we hope you don't, you don't uh, cave to pressure from Stephen Harper. We really want to make sure this project doesn't go ahead. Uh, the other thing that is very worthwhile, because anyone who studies this, and, and people, in, certainly Sandwich Gulf Islands, there's a very high degree of citizens who are engaged in issues. Uh, the national news media doesn't understand this issue, and I really do encourage people to write letters to the editor of mainstream Canadian papers in the hopes that these letters get published, because the most read section of any newspaper is the letters to the editor section, one or two letters from a resident of British Columbia saying, I don't think that, uh, that so far it's been made clear to the rest of Canada that we don't want the two-way risk of bitumen uh, sh and diluent mixed and diluent shipped in from the Middle East. I don't think anybody knows that in you know, or, or thinks about it much. Or just to say that this must be a decision for British Columbians. We do not want to have this imposed on us. We have a lot of industries that are dependent on an oil-free coast. We don't think there's any chance that this project could go ahead without posing serious risks to our existing industries. We have a lot going for us on this right now. We have the support of the BC uh, Federation of Municipalities. We have all the First Nations along. You mentioned that the Council of the Haida Nation. The Haida Nation, obviously, with Haida Gwaii being very, very vulnerable on all sides to an oil spill. Uh, we have the First Nations all along the pipeline route. And we also have, which I think is, was, is an, an unlikely ally in this, we have the BC Liberal administration of Christie Clark saying, no, they haven't proven their case, and no, there's no evidence for this. Now, up against that, we have Stephen Harper and Joe Oliver. We also have BC conservative members of parliament who likely know, particularly the coastal ones, the Vancouver area ones, that they'll never get elected again. If Stephen Harper were to say, I don't care what the province says, we've decided this is in the national interest and we're approving it regardless of what the province says. They have the constitutional right to do that. But I don't think they'd be able to get away with it politically. And I don't think their BC members of parliament would imagine that they'd ever get reelected if that was what was done. So stay, I think one of the risks that British Columbians have, one of our tendencies, is to think that Enbridge is so deeply discredited that there's no chance of this going ahead. But I think there's every chance that Stephen Harper will try to push it through, which is why we have to be uh, engaged, we have to continue, it, it, you know, signs around here would be great, but I think we're pretty strongly aware of the fact that most British Columbians oppose this project and don't, and also oppose, particularly for us here, our bigger risk in terms of spills is Kinder Morgan increasing its tanker traffic, uh, traffic out, of, out of Vancouver. What about the coal ports? The coal ports are another huge issue for to make it the largest coal shipping in North America that Vancouver... The Americans don't want it. They're no. giving it to us. Yeah. So there are a lot of points of contact where I think British Columbians... We, we've embraced carbon targets as part of a provincial strategy. Why do we want to ship coal to China to drive up greenhouse gases there? It's not as if the atmosphere it will segregate out the, the global climatic disruption that will accrue from built, burning coal in China and somehow you know, filter it out so it doesn't affect us here.
So there's, there's a lot of very big issues around the absence of a national climate plan. But at least on the tankers and pipelines, I think British Columbians are pretty unified, well, close to unified. Yeah. And we have to not, you know, we have to be prepared for whatever comes, but we have to be prepared to continue to say no and to try to educate the rest of Canada as to why.